Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to set up your new leopard geckos. You bred your leopard geckos after you paired them. Now you incubated your eggs. They're out of the eggs. So what do you do with them now? Stick around. Well, after you've done all the hard work, now it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labor, or in this case, baby leopard geckos. And it is the cutest thing to watch these guys hatch out. Sometimes if you're lucky, you'll come down and you'll watch the incubator. You'll look inside and you'll see a little egg with just a head hanging outside of the egg. It's the cutest thing. I'm so glad I've had the pleasure of breeding leopard geckos. This is my fourth year now, breeding leopard geckos. And what we've got here is, uh, well, this is Sarah. She was the first leopard gecko that ever popped out of a, an egg. Her name originally was Una for number one. But now everyone's got Land Before Time theme names. So we got Sarah over here. Her sister Ducky lives with my sister. And then we got Littlefoot, who is her tank mate. If you're breeding leopard geckos, there's a good chance you use a tub system. You use something like this. You use a rack like I have here to facilitate the housing of your leopard geckos because you probably have more than just a few. If you don't, you might want to think about doing a rack system for the babies, and here's why. If you have a bunch of leopard geckos and you have a bunch of I mean, aquariums or front opening glass enclosures or whatever it is, it takes up a lot of space, and if you use light to heat, uh, like a light bulb to heat each one, your power bill is going to be through the roof. So, what I suggest is make yourself a little rack, uh, kind of like what we have here. Imagine a bookshelf and just space it so that your tub slide in and out pretty freely. I'm going to show you the one that we've got here in just a moment. And for the babies, because they're smaller, you want to use something like a 12 or 18 quart tub or even a 6 quart when they're full on babies. I chose not to do this because uh, the 18 quart or 12 quart, I forget what it is, um, it'll be in the top corner somewhere though, I'll clarify. They fit in this, they're the same height as a 28 quart and a 41 quart, which means that the racks that I have are actually utility racks and they can fit several different sizes of tubs. So I don't have to build one for 41s and one for 28s and one for 18s or 12s or whatever it is that they end up being. I can use one rack, takes up one footprint of space rather than my entire room being racks because like we've said before, I want to make this a reptile paradise where you can look at all the reptiles not hide them away in tubs. Setting up the tub seems like a very simple thing, and it is. The thing is, you don't want to complicate it because if you're breeding them, likely you're going to be selling some of them as well. You want to provide as much enrichment for these animals as you can, but you want to make sure that it's sanitary. That's really important. And one issue that baby leopard geckos have is shedding issues, and you want to be able to check on this almost every day and make sure that if you need to help them shed, then you can, especially because where I live uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, Especially because where I live in the Northern Hemisphere, it's summer by the time these guys are popping out of the eggs or spring right into summer and then even into fall with some of my uh, leopard geckos because I kind of stagger some of them the way that I breed them. It gets kind of dry uh, in the winter months so we kind of go from a dry season to a wetter season back to a drier season with the furnace being turned on. So shedding issues is something you want to watch out for and having a bunch of stuff cluttering your tub is not the way to go. You have to dig them out, it's kind of a pain for the safety of your animals and for causing you not to have headaches, keep it pretty simple. So let's get right into it. What you see here is what the end product is going to be and you see one of the leopard geckos right here. So let's build one of these things. First things first, you want to get your 18, 24 quart. I got to figure out how big these freaking tubs are. And whether it's new or it's used, you want to make sure you rinse it out with water. Make sure that there's no debris in there. It's the easiest way to get it all out, especially if they're, it's a used tub. And then you want to disinfect it, even if it's brand new. You don't know who's touched it. You don't know what's been in it. You don't know how it was transported. What I like to use is F10. This stuff is a real, full-on veterinary sanitizer. My girlfriend is a vet tech. She works at a vet clinic. She recommends this stuff. There's a bunch of other products on the market as well, but the idea is you want to make sure it's something that's safe for animals and then you rinse it out. So you spray down with the F10, you wipe it all out, and then you spray it with water and then you wipe it out as well because you don't want residual disinfectant because leopard geckos a lot of the times like to drink water droplets off the side of the tub and if they're drinking F10, you're going to have sick or dead leopard geckos and those don't sell very well and they're not very much fun to watch. The next thing you want to do is put your substrate in. In this, I would suggest not going with a loose substrate because 
Baby leopard geckos will get impacted, likely if you use something that is uh, something that might clump together and it just, uh, to avoid all risk, don't do this. Use paper towel or reptile carpet if you want. It's it, kind of a hassle to use reptile carpet or newspaper. I used to use newspaper a lot, but to be honest, it is so ugly. What I've been doing now, uh, I, I use paper towel. It's white, it looks clean, it looks sanitary, it looks like a hospital or something. I love it, and it's really easy to swap out. So, and it holds moisture pretty well too, which helps with the humidity. Just go in there and spray every couple of days. Leave a dry spot, of course, and then make sure that they have their own human hide, which is something that you can use with either a coconut core or with uh, sphagnum moss. And you're gonna see clips of both over me talking here. Uh, I like to use the Eco Earth. The thing is, though, I use uh, what's called Beyond Peat. It's similar, it's the exact same thing really, it's a coconut core, it's a lot cheaper though, but it comes in big bricks. So if you only want to make a couple of these for babies, which you're just using like a one quart, uh, I think it's 950 milliliter sandwich container, you don't want to make a big giant brick of this stuff because then where are you going to put it, right? So I think that for small applications like this, there's no harm in using sphagnum moss. And that's something that I use for a laying medium for my hognose snake. So I had some of that laying around. Either way, both are very cheap to use. So now you've got your substrate down. I spray it down just a bit, now, like just enough to make it moist enough where it's pliable and you can kind of move it the way you want because it's not gonna fit perfectly into the container and you don't want it sticking up on the sides because then they're gonna try to wedge their way, they're gonna climb and try to wedge their way through the container uh, and get out. And I've had that actually happen before, before I found this nice trick where I actually use a piece of hardboard. So if you make your rack and it's just a little too much space for a baby, like obviously a, a regular, like a snake or something, a 28 quart wouldn't fit through this, but little baby geckos might. You can just use a little piece of uh, hardboard, which is an eighth of an inch, prop it up. It'll fit pretty snug, but your leopard geckos won't get out. Now make sure it has the essentials. Baby leopard geckos don't need a lot to survive. What I like to do is, it's not the bare minimum, but it's pretty minimalistic because I like to clean these things at least once a week because they do poop a lot uh, when they're babies and you don't want it to smell like poop in there, especially because it's a smaller size. Humidity is gonna be bumped up a little bit a couple times a week and it just starts to get gross, so don't do that. What you wanna do is make sure you have a human hide first. I always put this in the back corner. I put it on the hot side always because it kind of keeps it, no one wants to be damp and cold. If you're gonna be moist, you wanna be warm. And I think geckos or anyone, especially a, an animal like a gecko, which doesn't regulate its own body temperature, it's gonna be whatever temperature it is. If it wants to shed, but it's too cold in the human hide, it's not gonna use it. You're gonna have shedding problems, bad news, all the way around so what you want to do is put it on the hot side I used to use these 950 milliliters so like one quart containers they're fantastic put the medium in put them on the back corner and then you're good to go now what I also do is put a couple of dry hides one on the hot side one on the cool side and because baby leopard geckos are super small what you can do is take a tube uh, just like a tube from a paper towel roll right when it's done or even if you want to you can use um, bathroom tissue towel uh, paper towel toilet roll oh my goodness you can use those as well that's a great way to just cut them in half so I cut lengths uh, if they're a longer one and if it's a uh, toilet paper one I use the full length I just cut it in half so it kind of makes these like ridges right they're like half circles put one on the hot side one on the cool side and that way it can hide either way and also because you're using a paper towel or some sort of paper product like a newspaper they're going to be able to get underneath and hide that way as well so they can be pretty well hidden they're going to feel very secure and then you're going to be able to handle them a little bit more uh, easily as well because they won't be so afraid of you because they're comfortable so now your hides are good to go they can feel out of sight and comfortable in their environment of course uh, if you don't water them and feed them they're going to die so what you can do you don't really need standing water for leopard geckos this is something i never used to do but since I've started this channel, I found overwhelmingly that people feel very negatively against this. So I started to keep water, standing water with my leopard geckos because I want to see if it really improves their health in any way, shape or form and see if maybe they continue to lick off of the sides, which I watch them do a lot. And I've really never observed them drinking uh, from standing water, but I use these little caps, just bottle caps filled with water. In my experience, uh, since I've been doing this, about four days is how long it takes to dry out enough where you can't really drink from them anymore. So twice a week, just go and fill the bottle cap, or you can use a bigger one, like a bigger deli cup as well. I just like the super low ones because they're really tiny. These animals are super small, and I don't want them to have to climb like a mountain to get at their drinking water. So I do that, and I still spray them down, and then I use the bottle cap as well, or like the lid of a deli cup or something like that that's super shallow for them uh, to eat out of as well. And your mealworms might get 
get out of here but i wouldn't worry about it too much they're going to catch them and if not you're going to be cleaning this thing regularly anyway so they're not going to be able to have enough time to morph into beetles which your leopard geckos can't eat so you're going to be good to go with just two bottle caps one for water and one for food and there's your end product now what i've got is i've got this rack um, i would love to show you how to build one i'm probably not going to build one for a while though the idea is however tall your rack is or if you want to make it in two sections just however tall the one section is make sure that the width of the rack is how wide it is and then the height of the rack is how long the piece is get two pieces like that and then drill uh, put one on the bottom so now you've got basically half a box just without the top part uh, available to you and then put one whatever it is that you're going to use a 12 quart or a 41 quart down below and a spacer a one quarter inch spacer you can use coasters for this or cds i've seen people use or just get some hardboard cut, 1 8 hardboard, that's a perfect amount of space to leave in between each shelf. And put those there, so put your spacer on, and then lay flat your next shelf, screw it in, and repeat the process and just build it up from the bottom. And then you just wire your heat mat, or your heat tape is what I would suggest using. Put it to a thermostat, and that's it. It's a really easy concept. It's, it's pretty time consuming. Um, I would definitely suggest using a chalk line to make sure everything is even, so you don't drill through the ups and downs like the bottom and top of the racks uh, the shelves so that's how you do that uh, another video for another day and then the upkeep is pretty simple uh, I would suggest not selling your geckos until you know they're eating they're shedding perfectly they're having no issues and they're growing at a steady pace now of course I want to mention something too you can keep two geckos together if you incubate them at a temperature where you know they're gonna be females if it's gonna if it's somewhere in the middle where you don't know or you incubated them at male temperature you don't want to keep them together because there will be a day where they're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm a boy and I don't like other boys and I will kill my tank mate even though it's my brother. So you don't want to do that. Um, but if they're females, you can house them together. Yeah, I would suggest using the same size when they're babies. And then as they grow, you want to do bigger enclosures. That's basically the name of the game. But you can start as low as a 6 quart, go up to a 12 or 18, whatever it is. And then eventually end at a 28 quart. You're never going to need a bigger enclosure than this for a female or a male that's full grown. Or whatever ones you want to keep, you can put them in display cases, display pieces like I've got Sarah and Littlefoot in. Just because I love looking at them, they're fantastic. Uh, and of course, keep good records. Uh, you'll see on mine, I've got cue cards. It has their uh, name, their number, what animal they are, right? Leopard gecko. Uh, so 0 0.1 means female, 1.0 means male. 1.1 would be one male, one female. And then the, the date that they were born, the date that they were hatched, sorry, the date they were laid, the date that they were hatched, and then their morph, and that's it. I mean, just keep good records. Uh, you wanna keep feeding records, you can do that as well. I feel like I'm rambling on, so let's end this video while I still have your attention. One more thing too. Thanks very much for subscribing. Clearly, there's a few subscribers uh, who watch these videos because I love getting the comments. You guys give me great advice for new videos, and this week, we're gonna hit 1,000 subscribers, something that I thought it was going to take me like two years <laughs> and we're going to be six months as of on Monday. It's just one day after six months, the day this video comes out. Thank you so much. I honestly appreciate it so much. And if you haven't uh, subscribed yet, I'm not going to say so much anymore, but hit subscribe. That'd be awesome. And that's it. That's this episode of Wicked's Wicked Reptiles. What do you think I should talk about next week? Did I do a good job in this video? Did I get something wrong? Would you add something? Give me your advice because clearly you guys have been seeing. I take your advice and I apply it to better husbandry my animals, to better husbandry, to make the husbandry better. Anyway, I'll lead you out with some uh, nice pictures of leopard geckos, and I'll see you on Thursday.